2002's Brown Sugar Review and Thoughts. It is Black History Month, so we're going to take a look at some classic African-American movies. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really loved. I do acknowledge aspects of it are problematic. I'm going to try to explore them. This video will have some jokes, none at the expense of members of minorities, and we'll get into some serious topics. If you're looking for a view that's like, the movie doesn't really hold up, it's been outdone by little movies, because of that, it's not that much fun to watch today. Whether you agree with that assessment or not, this is not that review. I realize this video is long, I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I decide to do so over the course of the video, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so, and hold up an index finger right before and during spoiling so you can mute and skip ahead and choose to lower my index finger that'll mean that the spoiler section has ended once I end the review itself and get into the thoughts section so please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers including discussing the ending so this movie is rated PG-13 Let's see, so yeah, the MPA rated PG-13 for sexual content and language, and yeah, the the MDB Parents Guide, you know, profanity is listed as moderate, but sex, nudity, violence, and gore, alcohol, drugs, and smoking, and frightening and intense scenes are all mild, and yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and it is one of those cases where the you know it allows them to reach a wider audience but not really at the expense of you know subject matter or themes of the movie it's you know yeah it's the rating that makes the most sense it would have felt forced if they tried to fit in a lot more you know for example strong language or the like and this video will also be rated PG-13 and yeah uh, this is my first viewing of this movie. I just got done watching it right before I hit record on this video. And let's see. Yeah. Um, so the plot, I'm just going to quote IMDb here. They nail it. Friends since childhood, a magazine editor and a hip hop record executive stumble into romantic territory. And that yeah so this was written by Michael Elliott and Rick Famuyiwa henceforth Rick because otherwise I, I do not mean to him though I do not mean to imply that I know Rick personally I would be stumbling over his last name constantly so Rick and but yeah uh, Michael Elliott and Rick wrote this. Michael Elliott is credited with story and they're both credited with writing the screenplay. And I don't really know... <laughs> yeah. Um, the only other thing that I've watched that Michael Elliott has any writing credit for is Like Mike 2 Streetball, which he's credited with based upon characters created by you know, because it's the sequel to, and he wrote Like Mike, which, yeah, um, is, it's, yeah, that that's Michael Jordan. And this is one of the only things that I've watched that Rick had much of anything to do with, like the, you know, other than this, Rick wrote two episodes of The Mandalorian, he directed six, and he directed one episode of Ahsoka. That, I, I'm ashamed to admit, is actually the extent of my exposure to him. I have heard that there's other, let's see, the, the yeah, so the stuff I've heard that I really should have watched, that he, let's see, as far as director, uh, there's, there's Dope, and he directed an episode of The Chai. Right, and he, yeah, he both wrote and directed Dope. So, yeah. Um, 
I would very much like to, to watch more. And the yeah, this this is a good place to, to talk about the so so the screenplay, you know, this is a romantic comedy and the genre of romantic comedy is often seen as being primarily for women. A lot of the criticisms that are aimed at it are displaying misogynistic double standards. For example, a lot of people say, oh, the movies are all predictable, star all the same people, are made by a lot of the same people behind the camera. These things are also true of a lot of action movies, thought of as primarily made for men. It is entirely possible to find romantic comedies that have incredible acting and deep themes. You just need to know where to look, just like with action movies. And, yeah, this really gets across all the different, you know, it features the elements you want from a romantic comedy. You know, there's romantic tension, you have, you know, big romantic gestures, the, you know, there's good chemistry, there's, you know, the the friend character that, that is pushy, and it's, you know, they're, they're essentially comic relief, but there's a certain charm to them as well. And just, yeah, you know, it's, there's a certain, it, it is one of those things where you can, you, you, you get a pretty good sense of where the story's going from very early on. And I don't know, I just feel like there's a certain reassurance in the the idea I don't think every story needs to have twists you know and I think that might be about so yeah you know personally I've always loved romantic comedies I think a lot of young men would be a lot more emotionally healthy if they just allowed themselves to get into for example romantic comedies something that allows us to pro process complex and strong feelings regarding love and let's see. I th right. Um, so um, a major thing that that Rick brings to this that just there's a lot of of movies that could benefit from he you know the the movie. I'm not the first person to notice that the the movie. Ah, what's the word? It like. There's a there's um, parallel drawn between hip hop and the relationship between the the two leads Dre and Sid and the the yeah um, there is a lot a whole whole lot of hip hop played over the course of this and in several scenes Rick shoots and edits in a way that really captures the energy of the music without it just becoming like a music video that's of course the the risk you run if you if you go too far in that direction you end up with just you know a music video nothing against music videos but it's not great if parts of your movie are just music videos. You know, if you want to watch a music video, you go watch a music video. This is a feature film. But yeah, like the there's times where he'll use like a, a freeze frame, and there's times where I forget what it's called because it's I guess it's technically not split screen, but there's like I, I, I don't know picture in picture. I've it's been a while since I. But but yeah, you know, sometimes part of half of the the frame will be taken up by one thing and another half by another thing, and just yeah, there's a there the 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 camera movements and the the way it's edited just really fit with the music that's being played, and this is not like a a constant thing, but in scenes where it's in part about feeling the music and you know yeah it is a lot of the film is about the the love that these two people share of hip hop so yeah and i've you know i've seen movies i i'm afraid i can't think of examples off the top of my head but 
I've seen movies that completely fail this, that are trying to capture the, the yeah, the music, and it just really does not work. So I've seen some people say, oh, you know, it's so terrible how the, the you know, the movie is similar to When Harry Met Sally. And there definitely are some, you know, in some ways, there, there are some major similarities. You know, right off the, you, you have this thing of they, they start out as friends, although I've heard pretty strong arguments that it's weird that, Harry and Sally were ever friends, considering how how tense some of their, including the very first scene is. Anyway, they you know they start out as friends. They have relationships with, with other people, and over the course, you know, it just it takes them forever to realize, you know, maybe they should be together instead of with other people. I really don't think that it's like I. I'm sorry, but if you can't see a difference between this movie and when Harry met Sally, you're really just not looking at anything other than just the core idea. Like, when Harry met Sally is basically, like, it's about how these people change over many, many years of, of knowing each other. It's how different relationships affect them. You know, it's one of those things where, like, they're essentially, they're talking about almost everything. It's, it's a it's a movie about everything. It's a movie about life. This movie is very specifically about hip hop, and you know, yeah. There's this thing. I I would say this one is more when when it comes to like relationships between people. It focuses very heavily on this thing of you know sometimes we're just not quite ready to be honest with ourselves about who we're actually in love with and we're you know we end up following just you know we 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 meet a person and we we feel very strongly you know we we think that this is the person we should be with and instead of you know listening to that little nagging voice in our head that says no this you know they're they're a nice person and they deserve happiness you deserve happiness but that happiness is not you, you two together, you know, which is not as much. That's that's sort of a, a simmering element in when Harry met Sally. But here it's like, yeah, much more, yeah, much more the the focus. And let's see, yeah, right, uh, I wanted to briefly say, so some of the other people who have also brought up how, you know, this is very much about the, the yeah, how the, the relationship between Sid and Dre is like the, their relationship with hip-hop. Um, yeah, uh, Roger Ebert, R.I.P., his review is fine, but yeah, somehow he did not really pick up. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just, you know, white guy, he wasn't quite the right age, so he just didn't really pick up, yeah, you know, the, the this metaphor, which, like, it's very consistent throughout the movie. It's set up immediately, and yeah, there's a lot of, so... On, you know, I'm, I'm linking it down below, on the RogerEbert.com, on, on his review. S uh, okay, I'm going to try. I'm, I'm guessing it's pronounced Stevi Wundar. Commented several times and, yeah, um, did a really great job exploring this. And then there is also the... Review on Cinema.com review of this film, which again, linked down below. And that is about... Right, uh, I've noticed a pattern across several movies made by and for African Americans where they center parts of the movie, sometimes even the entire movie, around hip-hop or basketball, which 
along with American football, are considered the ways poverty-stricken Amer African Americans can make it big. Several of these movies will literally have, frequently at the very start of the movie, a short sequence of people who have helped define basketball or hip-hop talking about their love of it. The, you know, major other example is, that, that I've personally seen, is He Got Game, but I'm almost certain I've seen others do it. And there's there's a very real appreciation of the history of the the people who made it great and so, right um shout out to the nimrod who said that it was bad that the movie focused on the character's love of hip-hop because this user reviewer themselves couldn't personally relate to it yeah the movie was not made specifically only for you holy crap um yes so, yeah, uh, I recommend reviews from critics and users on Rotten Tomatoes, Metacritic, and IMDb. And I think that might be about... So, yeah, the, the opening of the film does a really great job setting up the rest of the movie, and the rest of the movie does quite a good job paying off what was set up and... Just, yeah, you immediately know what kind of movie it's going to be and how, yeah, the, the stylistic choices that make it much richer. I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. I love the way the movie ends, and yeah, you know, some, some people really didn't like the ending, but others did. And... Yeah, let's get into let's get into the character. So it's, yeah, uh, this is a pretty good time to say this movie is very heteronormative. It doesn't really like there's a little bit of gay panic, but it doesn't really have a lot of like yeah. Um, Pretty much the entire spectrum of LGBTQ plus does not really, you know, show show up here. I don't feel qualified to speak on it, on on the the relationship between African American culture and LGBTQ plus. Um, foreign Man in a Foreign Land did a fantastic video talking about the um you know i think i'm just going to i'm going to put it in the in the description um just going to make sure i can find it real quick um hmm i'm pretty sure i'll be able to find it is it hmm Um, and he also made one about the other, you know, yeah, he, he made one that's about, you know, yeah, LGBTQ, yeah, the LGBTQ plus community and how some of them are, are racist and, let's see. But also, yeah, also one that, hmm, um, suddenly I, I can't seem to find the, the video. Okay, you're going to give it one last shot at trying to, ah, okay, uh, maybe... Yeah, I'll I'll keep trying later to to see if I can find it, and if not, yeah, I don't know. Um, moving on, this has already taken up enough time. Anyway, yeah, so very heteronormative film. Tay Diggs star, you know, yeah, one of the two stars, 
plays Dre, and he is a very stereotypical guy, like, from, from the, yeah, from the community that he, yeah, um, he, he can be kind of sexist, which, thankfully, Sid does call him out on. He is very... There's definitely some male ego going on, which, again, thankfully, called out both by Sid and by Reese, who Dre is with. But, but yeah, you know, he really... He loves hip-hop, and he wants to try to make a difference. He wants to sign great artists to his company, and that's, you know, yeah, he's, he's, that's his main conflict with, like, his boss and, and such. Sana Lathan, who plays Sydney who I I worry I might have said wasn't that great of an actor when I talked about Alien vs. Predator. At the time, I did not realize how talented she was in other stuff. And it, you know, in her defense, that's not a movie where anyone really comes out looking all that good. And she was, like... She was brought into the, the movie very late, so she didn't have a lot of time to really get into the, the character. But, you know, she's great here. She's great in Blade. I would very much like to see her in more stuff. But, but yeah, um, Sid is, you know, yeah, she, she writes, well, let's see. Yeah, yeah, she, she writes articles and... You know, also about her love of hip hop, her voiceover, you know, sets up and reinforces the the metaphor of the relationship between Dre and Sid being like the relationship. You know, yeah, the the as they grow and mature, so does hip hop, and the way that they love each other is the way they love hip hop and such, and yeah. Um, there's a little, tiny little bit of, like, neurotic thing going on with her, but by and large, she is very confident and, you know, powerful, and, she, you know, she knows she deserves respect, and she demands it. She does not let anybody treat her badly, which, you know, s sadly, there are, you know, that's not only an issue for African Americans. They're, you know, in a, in a lot of different communities. Yeah, some, some people are intensely misogynistic. There's also internalized misogyny, and they just don't think that women should be confident. And yeah, it's great to see a movie that really embraces, you know, the movie never makes it out to be that women should not be confident. It's not that there's no woman who ever makes a mistake in the movie, but them being confident is not seen as inherently a bad thing. And, and like I mentioned, you know, it calls out Dre's, like, sexism and misogyny. So Moss Def plays Chris, who is this up-and-coming rapper and a hip-hop artist. And, you know, incredibly talented as... Mostaf is in real life. I have to admit, I think this might be the only time I've seen him act so far. I know he's been in other... St oh, that's right. Holy crap. He was on Dexter. He was fantastic on Dexter. I don't know if I want to give away... Yeah, you can you can easily look up what he played. Just don't want to give it away. For wow, he wasn't... That just shows how little I remember the movie Showtime. I'm a fan of his music, you know, I, I think he, he's one of the, the, you know, musicians to actors, transitions that, you know, I don't know if he's like the most talented, but the charisma he has when he performs music translates very nicely into charisma as an actor, and just, yeah, you know, you, you like seeing him 
I, from what I recall, he was quite... There, there was some complexity to his character on Dexter. I'm not sure that I would say there's a lot in this movie, but the you know he's also not given that much from from like writing but but yeah you know you you really like him you want to see his character succeed and then we have Nicole Ari Parker as Reese who Dre is with from you know the start of the film and it's this thing of she doesn't fully appreciate how much hip hop means to, to Dre, and that's um, you know that there's some tension in the relationship because of that, which again you know implies maybe Sid would be better for Dre since she does 100% understand. You know the first scene is literally they're like 10 years old. It's 1984, and they're seeing you know, this amazing performance. So, yeah. But, but yeah, I quite appreciate, you know, Reese is not, like, made out to be, like, this awful, awful person. That's, that I will definitely say. I, I find it frustrating when romantic comedies try to, you know, I think part of it is that they're worried that people will leave the movie thinking, oh, I kind of wish that, you know, these two people had ended up together, so they'll make certain, you know, the, the, yeah, the other love interest will be just, like, cartoonishly, sometimes they're just, like, evil, sometimes they're just, you know, unappealing in, in one way or another, but I really appreciate this, this doesn't go for that, like, it's, the reason that we don't really want Reese and Dre to end up to, to to stay together for the whole movie is because the this this very personal connection thing, and you know, love in real life is also complicated. Sometimes you feel very strongly for someone that you just don't quite have that personal connection with. And that doesn't have to mean, you know, in, in romantic comedies it often does, but in real life it doesn't have to mean that you can't be together. Sometimes that's the kind of thing that can grow over time. You know, I 100% agree with to mention love isn't, you know, either isn't what happens at first sight or it isn't better if it happens at first sight. Love is that creepy uppy kind of thing. And yeah, there's that's not for that romantic comedies is not necessarily the best genre. But yeah, you know, I really do appreciate that it's not cuz like yeah, some some of these movies have some some romantic comedies it's like if the 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 other love interest isn't quite as you know conventionally attractive for example or maybe they have some habit what was i want to say it was uh sleepless in seattle where where like you know one of you know she has an annoying laugh and that's supposed to be a deal breaker and i forget if it's that movie no, I think it's a different... It's one of the Meg Ryan movies. It's one of the Meg Ryan romantic comedies. But there's one where, like, you know, the audience is supposed to think, oh, she shouldn't be with that guy because he, like... There's something... Like, when he sleeps... I don't... I don't think he was snoring, but there's something when, when, he, when he sleeps. A certain noise, or he has to have, like, some kind of... You know, something on his face to... to for some kind of medical thing, which, yeah, uh, just kind of ableist, pretty, pretty gross. But you know, this movie doesn't do that. The 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 love interests that we don't want the leads to end up with are conventionally attractive, and they, you know, they seem like more or less good people. They're just not quite right. And I really love when a movie trusts the audience because obviously if by the end of this movie you're you're sitting there thinking you know those 
two should not have ended up together. Yeah, you know, you're not going to go watch it again. You're not going to recommend it to your friends. You know, that's like when an action movie has a, you know, ends with the villain winning. You know, that it's that kind of thing. Boris Kojo plays Kelby Dawson, a basketball player, and yeah, um, this guy, he is someone that, you know, if, if you're a young guy and you're, you're straight or buyer pan, you're, you're super into, to someone who you think might love romantic gestures, watch this guy, because holy crap, he is so smooth, it is just, wow, you know, and, yeah, um, I've 100%, you know, I'm straight, but, holy crap, he's, he's slick, and the, you know, I'm, I've, I'm not personally into him. Is this sounding like I, I I don't have any problem with like LGBTQ plus people. I just don't I don't want to be mistaken for one because I don't want people to think that I'm like you know I, I can't speak on behalf of the community. That's all. I have otherwise I have no problem with anyway. Um, I'm not saying I want to be with him, but. Yeah, if I was still dating, I might, you know, try to imitate some of the, like, I, I, when I was younger, I was kind of romantic, but cannot compete with, with him. Then we have Queen Latifah as Francine, and she's basically the, the sassy best friend type, and it's, I, I have not seen Queen Latifah act very, in, in very much, like, I guess, Honestly, it's like, it's this, and then, uh, what was it called again? I'll, I'll have it moment here. Oh, wow, I completely, oh, that's right, yeah. Um, Scary Movie 3, The Bone Collector. Wow, it's been so long I, I actually forgot she was in that. But I honestly, I remember almost nothing about The Bone Collector. I think all I, yeah, I really all I remember about that movie is that, Ed O'Neill, Al Bundy, plays a cop in it, and he's just gobbling it up. He's loving every second of playing a cop. You know, that was something he wanted to play before becoming known as Al Bundy. And he has played cops other times since. Sphere is the the thing I remember Queen Latifah from, from if we're talking like acting. Again, incredibly talented musician and you know, the charisma she has when she performs music translates really well to, yeah, acting. And it it is one of the things, you know, like, I know some people found, you know, her, yeah, the this thing of, this is not the only movie where she is, you know, an, an abrasive black woman. And, and some people absolutely freaked out that, Again, you know, like, in the, the, you know, white supremacist America, there's this idea that black people shouldn't be confident and women shouldn't be confident. So a confident black woman, yeah, that really people completely lose it. But, but yeah, you know, she is, the, the there's some, there's some crassness. She's very open when discussing sex, for example. Some of the funniest bits are, are her lines and, like, reaction shots and such. And, yeah, you know, she could be a little bit of a busybody, but you know what? She's got really good instincts. Like, she, she's going to try to make sure that certain people end up with certain other people, but she's not wrong. You know, she's, she's seen that this is this would be a, a good thing for both of them. And I think then, yeah. Um, Eric Wiener, if that's how you pronounce it, plays Ren. Regwins plays Ten. And they are this black and white rap duo. The, 
the Dalmatians, the the hip hop Dalmatians, and they're just they're so so bad, like the just terrible. You know, I I yeah, they are not moving hip hop forward, and yeah, it's it's a gimmick. You know, they are just being a gimmick and that is one thing where you know Dre really doesn't like this this gimmicky kind of thing but his boss thinks you know this will sell records and that is you know that is one of the conflicts that hip hop you know has gone through maybe still is going through I honestly don't I, I don't really follow music today but you know yeah that's again and it's, it's like they are very funny as these incredibly just terrible hip hop artists. And it's also one of those things where like the the movie trusts the audience to realize, okay, this is bad music without having to like way overdo it. Like you can understand listening to it, you could see how okay. I guess if you have no idea what makes for good hip hop. I guess this sounds, it's, you know, but without, like, it's not, like, off-key and, like, completely off-beat or, you know, yeah, anyway, moving on, I think that is everything I wanted to say about the characters, and... Yeah, the, the dialogue is quite good. There's a, you know, ev everyone has a real voice, and it's another area where the movie feels really authentic. You know, you, you can tell that it was made by and for people who actually grew up in, like, black neighborhoods where hip-hop was just huge. It was you know, life-changing. It wasn't just, you know, something you, you put on in the background. And I think that might be about... Um, that... Yes, uh, the budget was $8 million and the box office was $28 million. So, yeah. And, you know, especially for, for 2002, that was quite successful, and, yeah, uh, they do a, a good job. Like, the movie never feels cheap, but it also isn't, like, trying to, you know, like, overpower you with, you know, just really expensive stuff. They, they spent the money really well throughout and it was actually filmed you know in Manhattan where it's set really adding this yeah further adding to the authenticity the soundtrack is amazing honestly this is one of those movies where honestly I might buy the soundtrack separately and the movie is oh, hold on. There we go. The movie is 106 minutes without end credits and 109 and a half minutes with. So, you know, like many other romantic comedies, does not overstay its welcome. There's really no waste of time in it. You know, the... Yeah, I was really, really enjoying it from the very start to the very end. I, I never felt like it was, you know, just taking way too long on on anything or rushing through anything. You know, I could definitely see, like, there might be people who say, ah, oh, you know, do we really need to spend that long listening to, to this piece of hip-hop? But, yeah, it absolutely is... You know, the, the movie starts with classic hip-hop. 
So when not very long after we start hearing Chris or Cav, yeah, you know, you can tell, okay, this is this is amazing, you know, this is the the kind of thing and, and very shortly after or yeah, either let's see, I think it was right after that we hear a little bit of the of the Dalmatians and and yeah, the contrast is yeah. So the the best elements of this, you know, how how charming it is, how much you do end up invested in these people and you know, yeah, them ending up happy together. Um I think that might be Right. Uh so so yeah, I I read some some user reviews Several people said that they did not think the movie was quite as good as Basketball Diaries, which I, I do, I, I have not watched that movie, but I, I could imagine, you know, the, the, yeah. And, uh, let's see, yeah, um, I was... Before watching it, I was most worried that this would have some of the more annoying of the romantic comedy tropes, you know, the the misunderstanding, for example, and I'm not going to give away whether that specific one is there, but honestly, I really felt like it went very light on those. Like, again, it just, the, the things that end up kind of causing rifts between these people... It's stuff that happens in real life. It's it's not super shallow. It just is okay. A little bit of it is pretty shallow. You know that a, a lot of mainstream genres have shallow elements. Not only romantic comedy. Not only the ones that are supposedly mainly for women. But no, the the it's stuff that actually it's. You know, it's stuff that feels small but does matter. I think they did a, a really great job there. And let's see. Right. Um, I've been, you know, my mind has been trying to come up with something from from like memory of like, you know, I would definitely say. I only watched it once, and that was many, many years ago, but the 1998 Parent Trap, where also, you know, we're hoping that certain people end up together, the, the, the female love interest in that movie that we hope that, you know, the, the, yeah, that we do not want the, um, uh, huh. Somehow I can't find the character name, but, because it's not, oh, here we go, yes, yes, um, yeah, Meredith Blake from that movie is played by Elaine Hendricks, who I will say threw herself into the role, like, she clearly got that this, you know, yeah, she 100% was down with, okay, this is the character everyone hates, Trust me, I can do that. I can make you despise her. You know, it's one of those. I feel kind of bad for her. I'm, I, I can imagine she's probably a very nice person in real life, and a lot of people think of her as. as but yeah, she's she's pure evil. It's ridiculous. And I get okay, that movie is partially also made for children. A lot of kids' movies, the the like villain character is is evil. But like, just it's ridiculous how far they go to make her character just pure evil to make sure that the audience doesn't want you know i i think that movie would have worked perfectly fine if they had severely toned down that character but again they they were probably worried that you know maybe there'd be some people in the audience who didn't hate her quite enough and they would want her to end up with i think he's called his name, his name was nick you know so but let's see the um, yeah, um, and the thing I was most looking forward to from this movie was a celebration of hip-hop. That was probably the primary reason why I 
decided to watch it. You know, I, I added it to the, the schedule as soon as I found that out about it and saw, you know, I can't say for the rest of the world, but here in Western Europe, it is on Disney Plus right now. And on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 66% from critics and a 90% from audiences. The 66 is based on 88 reviews, let's see, 58 of them fresh. 6.20 out of 10 is the average rating, and the, the average user or audience rating is 4.4 out of 5. And there's more than 50,000 ratings. And let's see, yeah, the consensus, though predictable and possibly too sweet, brown sugar is charming, well-acted, and smarter than typical rom-com fare. And on Metacritic, it has a 58 from critics, based on 28 critic reviews, and an 8.5 from users, but no user reviews have been added and yeah the 58 from from critics based on 28 critic reviews 61 percent positive 36 percent mixed one or four percent negative only one review that's actually and okay fair enough so the negative user review says draws a belabored association between romance and hip-hop and it's hard not to wish the parallel lines would hurry up and converge I can 100% appreciate that's yeah I didn't mind personally but 100% I can I can see that and it's it's kind of funny cuz you know one one critic said that and then another you know and on the other hand you have Roger Ebert not really seeming to to yeah the the yeah seemingly not understanding the the that the movie was doing this so you know it was too subtle for some people or white dudes and you know not subtle enough for others now there are 36 links in the MBB external review section 20 of them still work and are in English and it currently has a 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb based on 10,000 ratings. 20.3% gave it 7, 18.8 gave it 6, 14.6 gave it 10, 14.3 gave it 8, 10.4 gave it 5, 7.8 gave it 9, 5.2 gave it 4, 3.2 gave it 1, wow. 2.9 gave it 3, 2.5 gave it 2. And there are currently 64 user reviews on IMDb, or 56 if you hide spoilers. I read all of them, and of those, only one person gave it a 1 out of 10, one gave it a 2, no one gave it a 3, one gave it a 4, another gave it a 5, one gave it a 6, 8 gave it a 7, 7 gave it an 8, seven, another 7 gave it a 9, and 17 gave it 10. And that brings us to there we go. Yeah. Um I rate this seven hip hop love stories out of ten. And I absolutely felt like it it holds up like basically the one thing where I didn't really feel like that was the case is yeah, if if honestly, if I'd watched this in 2002, I might not even have thought about it. But you know, today I try to be more aware. It's very heteronormative, and I you could easily have have like I kind of appreciate that at least like the the gay panic thing doesn't really make gay people look bad. It does make homophobic straight guys look really silly. Like just. You're, we're, we're laughing at them being ridiculous about this. We're not laughing and thinking they're so right, you know. And I think that 
Uh, let's see. But we, yeah, you know, it does a really great job just going into to this really major element of African American culture and you know, exploring the the ups and downs in a non-judgmental way. There's a lot of movies that try to like white explain stuff to audiences. This wasn't really one of those like, you know, if you if you sit down and try to watch this and you don't really know anything about hip hop, yeah, you know, chunks of it just are not going to resonate as much with you. You'll be able to follow it fine. And that covers the review itself. So let's get into the first section of thoughts, notes taken while watching. There we go. And yeah, um, you know, yeah, hip hop is part of the movie from the very first frame and you know, it's connected to Sid's job from right away through the narration. And it's, you know, it's it's a neat little thing of, you know, the narration throughout the movie, it's the book she's writing, you know, it's yeah, very very nicely done that allows because she's she's writing the book about how much she loves hip hop, and it just so happens that you know there's stuff, you know, every so often she mentions Dre, and you know the the things she says about her love of hip hop also re, you know apply to her relationship with with Dre, and and yeah, uh, fantastic! I love the way the the. The filming and editing of the 1984 flashback, you know, this this thing of, you know, Sid so badly wants to, to be able to, you know, she wants to get close to, to these, you know, hip-hop artists, and, you know, she just, she can't quite squeeze through, there's this, you know, all these people who are taller than her, because a lot of them are adults, so she can't, she can't look above them, and she can't quite squeeze through. And, you know, Dre is like, you know, come come over here. And, you know, they both stand on top of the, the bench and are able to, to see. And just, like, if I didn't already love hip-hop, um, this scene would have made me fall in love with hip-hop. Just really gets across. Just, yeah, it was... It's, I, I, I gotta say, I don't... I, I have never had the the pleasure of actually being at a live performance of hip hop like I, that must be amazing especially in this kind of you know it's it's a fairly intimate setting you know they're they're close enough they could reach out and touch the performers so yeah and let's see Right, right. The yeah. So Dre calls Sid, and he's basically he's trying to show off to his coworkers. Like, check out. You know, I got this. I you know I have her right where I want her. I'm the man. She's the woman. I'm you know I I barely even have to ask, and she's gonna she's gonna fold. She's gonna give me exactly what I want. That's how he thinks it's gonna go down. And she, like, she, she can hear, because that's, you know, in, in case you've never experienced it yourself, yeah, you can actually absolutely hear the, the difference b between if someone has you on speaker or, or not. So she picks up, am I on speaker? And he's like, oh, no, I mean, I mean, yeah, you're on speaker, but it's just, I'm the only one in the office, don't worry about it. And, yeah, she decides she's going to embarrass him a little bit, and just, yeah. You know, first it's like, you know, you're going to apologize. And he's, he starts to go along with the apology. And then she's, like, changing it up. She's, like, adding more words. He's like, you can't, you can't do that. This is not, you know, just, yeah, very fun. And, and <laughs> yeah, you know, she she wins this this little 
verbal joust. Very, very, yeah. And <laughs> I like Francine with with the two, you know, oh, someone's thirsty. And they start playing MOP, and I'm just, oh, love it. Absolutely love it. One of my favorites. Yeah. And not only not only our MOP one of my favorite but it's specifically Annie up that they're playing which just yeah one of their absolute best and yeah we get the detail that Dre and Sid both know each other's favorite drink and let's see Right, and then, yeah, um, very fun when, so, so this is Sid meeting Reese, and, you know, first, there's the, let's see, so there's, there's several little things in this scene, they're very, very nicely done. First, you have the fact that Reese is kind of uncomfortable about how close the friendship is between Sid and Dre. You know, they're like hugging right in front of her, and she's like, "Ah, oh, that's you know, too. Can I can I trust the two of you together?" Kind of thing. And then you know, Dre kisses Reese right in front of Sid, which is you know, like it's a power move. It's like you know, you get your own, he's my man, kind of thing. And you know, just the look on Sid's face is like, "Oh my god!" You know, just and then Sid and Reese. <laughs> you know they're they're like talking and and Dre is like kind of annoyed and let's see I think he yeah yeah they they like they make a, a a joke and and he's like fake laughing and Sid and and Reese are like do you do you hear that it sounds like male ego <laughs> and he's like you know okay come on you know and and they're there it is again, you know, just, yeah. Because he's trying to reassert his dominance as a man, and and they're like, no, that's, give, give it up, dude. You're not going to win this one, you know, just, yeah. Love seeing confidence in women. And, and black people. And the, the, um, let's see, then we have the, yeah, and, and, you know, we see the, you know, Dre proposes, and we see it from Sid's point of view. You know, very, very nicely done, this thing of, because, yeah, the, the, that immediately, you know, there's this subconscious thing of, we're not thinking, oh, that's so good for Reese, we're thinking... Poor Sid, you know, very, very nicely. Because at the end of the day, you know, she is the one who understands him more. And, you know, we, we get this, like, it's a little hint that maybe this marriage isn't going to be quite as happy as they would like it to be. And, <laughs> yeah, um, pretty funny when, you know, so, so yeah, um, Francine is talking to Sid and she's like come on you gotta hook up with Dre and there's that line about you know I know where everything goes and then she's got the let's go with massager sure it's technically a massager you know and she says you know where this goes <laughs> and and just yeah very very fun and and yeah you have that thing about you know she says men take too long which I mean, when you're right, you're right. That is, it's, yeah. And and that was, you know, this, yeah, the early 2000s were a time when there was a, a certain, you know, it wasn't like the start of that, but there was definitely a certain awareness that, yeah, you know, a, <laughs> a lot of straight women have an easier time getting off by themselves, whether it's, you know, hand or, or electronic or not electronic, you know, then if a, a man is trying, you know, a lot of young men don't know what they're doing. 
And yeah, I am not including myself in that. So yeah, cause, and, and honestly, part of it is how bad sex education is, you know, but yeah, I, I quite appreciate the, the, and, and, you know, the movie's not shaming her for it. It's, you know, like, obviously it's a little awkward that, you know, she doesn't want Francine to be bringing it up and, and to, you know, let's see, the, if I say rub her face in it, that's gonna put the wrong image in your head, but yeah, you're welcome. The, the, yeah, you know, she's, she's putting her on the spot and about this thing, but yeah, it's not, you know, she's basically just saying you should be with a man, not with this. She's not saying that there's something wrong about, you know, sexual confidence. It's been a while since I listened to Queen Latifah, but I feel like, isn't she, I think she's one of those female rappers who specifically talk about, you know, female sexual confidence. I know Missy Elliott is one, and that was around, they were both quite big around this time. I, I think that is so so yeah you know that's what the movie is saying it's not saying that there's something wrong with female sexuality just you know and quite the opposite it's saying you know young men gotta get better at pleasing women and let's see um hmm. yeah then we have the it was it was pretty funny when the the wait is that yeah I think it's around this this point where you know the the um, Sid and and Dre yeah they they go to this this you know store which is also you know yeah get get you someone who's willing to do because because it is like A lot of us young men are not the biggest fans of going out and buying, you know, they're like buying stuff for the new place or so, something like that, you know, it's, and, and, but he's willing to do it and he's not like constantly whining about it. He's just, he's a little annoyed that, you know, the, the, there's that thing about, you know, the, the, um, the person working at the, the store is like, you know, all young couples love this, this item, you know, newlyweds and it's like, you know. Again, planting that idea and, and saying, everybody can see it but them. Everybody in the world looks at them and says, you two, you're already together, right? Because, like, it's obvious you need to be. You should be together. And, you know, she's like, no, 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 no. And, and you know, the store person walks away and he's like, you didn't have to say it like that. <laughs> because it's virtually of the male ego. Nothing is as fragile as the male ego. Nothing in the entire multiverse. Wet paper is less fragile than the male ego. And yes, I am including myself in that. Yeah, just... That was that was very fun. And, and yeah, you know, you have the thing about... He's, like, talking about... You know, he's objectifying women. And then she, you know, yeah, she calls him out on it and points out, so... Which am I? You know, if, if we're if you're going to be objectifying women, you know, presumably I'm I'm one of the you know, and and he's like trying to dance like a, a rap in a rap video and and trying to get her to do it in in this like really public place and this kind of you know I don't know if the store itself is fancy but it's it's a fairly serious place you know just yeah. You know, that's him trying to make her feel bad about, you know, she's like, if so if all women can are, are just like that, then which one am I? You know, do you th really, you know, do you respect me more than that? And, and, you know, he's like, oh, well, if we want to talk sex, sure, let's talk sex. And, yeah, um, very fun at the, you know, the... I forget what it's, it's called, but a bridal thing, you know, pre-wedding thing, and yeah, one, one of them's like, okay, Sid can't play anymore because she knows all the answers, you know, which, yeah, telling the, the not only the viewer, but also Reese, you know, yeah, like, Sid knows everything about Dre, which, again, you know, can make you very uncomfortable. And, let's see, yeah, um, 
very fun, you know, Francine's gift, uh, just like, and, and, you know, it's one of those things where, like, we, the viewer, have already seen, like, Francine is way too, like, overtly, not, not by all standards, but compared to Sid. Like, Sid is uncomfortable with how overt Francine is with her sexuality, so yeah, of course, Francine buys, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, like, in real life, would you really let... At the very least, like, look at what, you know, maybe maybe go with her to make sure she doesn't buy something like that for, you know, but it works well in a movie. It's it's legitimately funny, and, you know, Aunt Betty's like, you go, you know, that's awesome. She's she's 100% in favor of it. Let's see. And then, yeah, we have the... Dre getting a, a hot dog. And I love the little moment where he's like, oh, this is so good, and he, like, Holds it up so the you know and the and the hot dog man is like you you know awesome you know which it's it's one of those things like I I don't think I could ever I I I would be way too anxious to work in like food service I'd constantly be worried about you know getting something wrong and and so but it's got to be a wonderful feeling to to when when someone is like this is this tastes so good you know but the the yeah we get this detail about you know he's not getting to eat you know the stuff he likes with with Reese you know oh it's all, always these fancy things and that was also you know when they were at the when when Sid was at the the place he's like oh, that's all all you've got are these cucumber sandwiches with a crust got real you know. and let's see yeah um. The TMI was was quite funny, and let's see, yeah, and and they go to the club and just amazing. Like you completely understand why Dre really badly wants to sign. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name already. Um, Cav. It's the it's the ADHD, which I do actually have that diagnosis. It's not disrespect and let's see the fact that I'm struggling to remember names yeah um, and it's, he turns down Dre and yeah he's making some good points you know it's it's this thing of like you know you know what was it he said Millennium isn't ready for the kind of music I made you know and then the the Dalmatians make their inglorious introduction to the movie and it's like oh my god these guys just holy crap and and I love how people keep getting their names wrong like nobody actually respects them there's just there's people who think that they're profitable and then there's people who are like okay maybe they're, they're profitable but it's this you know it's wrong it's it's a gimmick it's not art you know, it it doesn't hit that kind of you know, and but but no one in you know across that it, neither of these groups of people respect Ren and Ten enough to actually just remember their names. Like there's a later scene where it's it's Simon Dre's boss who also gets the names wrong. Just yeah, and. You know, you'd think that he would, like, go out of his way to get the names right. Because they're, you know, they're going to be working together. They're making money for each other kind of thing. You know, if he's... And and he's, he tells Dre that he's very serious about, you know, we, we got to sign them and, and people like them. And... Yeah, that thing about, you know, profit versus keeping it real and yeah fun talk about you know whether or not punked out and and yeah there's the thing about you know you know the the shady deals is like 10 percent 30 50 which that was a, a fun you know running gag the the two of them you know he'll 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 
really un, you're Ill, you either downplay or or over ah, exaggerate the the number and she'll get him to to admit what it's the yeah the real and yeah, and we see this thing of you know there's some there's some sexual and romantic tension because Sid really gets Dre and really yeah really listens to to him he he feels he has an easier time talking to her than to Reese and and there's the thing about you know are, are you sure about this yes I'm gonna marry Reese Reese. <laughs> Which again, you know, if if you don't have ADHD, you really should be able to remember, yeah, the name of the, and and at the at the actual wedding, some really really funny stuff with, you know, because because again, like Francine is like, come on, we all know this, you know, no, Sid and Dre should be together, not Dre and Reese. And and you know Sydney is like, but you put your hand down. The movie isn't over yet. And yeah, this this whisper argument and people around them shushing. And yeah, and and they talk about you know hip hop going mainstream and the the ups and downs. And let's see. And we have the. Um, yeah, um, so Kelby, you know, he, he requested specifically to, to talk to Sid, and, you know, there's that thing about, if it's not, it's not a date, though, and, yeah, it's a, it's a date, and holy crap, he is just incredibly charming, and let's see, yeah, and, and, <laughs> Dre not used to seeing Sid in a in a sexual way, you know, and and it seems like she does usually dress you know slightly more conservatively, so you know yeah seeing her like that you know and 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 Francine on the phone is like are you are you showing it oh you know let's see but but yeah you know so Dre walks up and he's like oh I I almost didn't recognize you you look amazing. <laughs> That's one of those things that I just, that I will cop to. I have almost definitely said something like that at least once. And I sincerely apologize if she's watching. Like, that's one of those things. It's not that we mean to, to be insulting. It's just this thing of, like, when the blood is not in our brain anymore. When when something like that comes out, when we see you like that, it's just it's you know, but yeah, it's it's one of those things you just you gotta you gotta sit down, you gotta you gotta practice. If she looks good, don't say that you don't recognize her because she looks you know just yeah, and yeah, the Dalmatians, some more, yeah. I think they did they did a really good job like striking a balance like it was slightly cringy but not like turn off the movie cringy. And um yeah, uh Dre leaves Millennium and and talks to you know and and yeah, Cav, you know, like basically he it is that thing like he turned down Millennium even though he's like driving a cab because just yeah he knows that Millennium would try to change what he's doing into something way too mainstream way too like like a like a product some you know a consumer product instead of this much more raw and honest thing that he's got going yeah, he'd rather drive a cab and and rap at these like it was like I think it was like an open mic thing, you know, then sell out, you know, and and yeah, you know, 
The I, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with driving a cab, but, you know, America, the, the capitalist system, thinks that's some of the lowest you can, you can do, and we have this kind of gross racist joke about, yeah, I don't, I don't want to repeat it, but just the, yeah, Dre says, you shouldn't be driving a cab, and then he says, yeah, then he explains why, and uh, let's see. Yeah, and we see all the all the roses that Kelby got for for Sid, and yeah, we see Dre open up as he and Sid talk about classic hip hop, and you know. She does, yeah. She gets him some some money to to help start up the the company, which you know incredible gesture. And yeah, then we get this ridiculously romantic date with with Kelby. And and I I quite appreciate that the the you know afterwards. And you know they're they're like flirting and and you know he's like so this was that was pretty amazing right and and she's like mm, you know, it's fine I guess it's you know and let's see yeah you have the the um, uh, yeah Dre tells Reese about the the job and that's you know yeah him him leaving Millennium and him doing the the yeah this other label there's so many romantic comedies where he would have lied to her for a while until she eventually found out i really appreciate not having to go through that because it's you know it's maybe okay in one movie but after a while it just gets to be exhausting to watch in you know in a genre that you might otherwise love because the you know the problem doesn't have to be this miscommunication it's you know when he tells he, yeah when he tells Sid she like tries to, to listen and, and be supportive when he tells Reese she says you should have talked to me before making this decision and I don't think that she's wrong of you know ultimately it is like it's it's not what Dre wants out of a relationship, and and it's not what she wants out of a relationship. You know, the the um, yeah. So I I really thought that was I, it. Didn't come across as the movie is like trying to say, you know, the the that that it is wrong for her to to see things that way. It's just that they're not they're maybe not compatible considering that and yeah you know she makes a good point this is this affects both of us we're married you you know yeah I I do think that he was in the wrong but it is the kind of thing you know that's also you know there's a lot of movies where yeah acting on your emotions is made out to be a more like yeah, that's that's seen as a as a positive. So again, I really appreciate that she, as a realist, is not made out to to just be this this horrible. There's there's a lot of movies, a lot of American movies, that would have said, oh, you know, how how dare she? You know, he says, you know, I'm the man. You should be supporting me. And she counters, you should have talked this over with me. And then we have the, you know, yeah, basically he wants support from her and she's saying you should have consulted with me or, or yeah, the, that word at least comes up. I don't remember. And yeah, um, Dre calls Sid after the, the date and, you know, he, he says, did you see him cook? And, and, yeah, it is, like, 
That's again, I, I have never myself done something, but there's definitely, there's a lot of young straight men who will make it seem like they're going the extra mile to, to impress uh, a young woman. And it's actually, you know, that wasn't, yeah, that wasn't them doing that. They just made it seem like that. And let's see, then we have, but yeah, you know, and, and right before the, the call is over, you know, or, or I guess actually when the, the call is over, you know, Dre, he's, he's trying to whisper, but he says Sydney's name a little too loud. Reese knows that's who he's talking to, you know, and it, again, is this thing of, you know, are you two more than friends? And we have the... Yeah, um, so they sit and drink coffee for like 30 seconds. And it's like, it's it's in the air, you know. Okay, yeah, we, we know where this is going. And they're both just like waiting for the other person to say... And, and finally, you know, it's just, let's have sex. Let's. And... Yeah, and and Dre goes to the effort of tracking down Cav and and going there, and you know, yeah, trying to to talk him into it, and I like how Cav keeps calling Grinch because it it is this thing of you know, his his heart's not in it, and yeah, the the his actions are making this thing that that some people absolutely love worse you know so that's not what he means to do but that is the end result and yeah you know sometimes we need to be called out and that is something that i understand african-american culture is actually they're better at calling each other out than a lot of us white people are like if there's a lot of white people who will just be like passive aggressive if there's someone that we think is doing something that they shouldn't and African Americans will just be like don't do that you know he just yeah that's yeah um and I like the thing about you know so 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 you know this is for the backseat oh uh sure I'll, I'll get you a coffee how long do you think it'll take to clean the backseat and it's like, oh, you want me to clean the back seat? And it's this thing of, you know, he has to prove to, to, yeah, for one thing, he, Dre has to prove to Cav that he's 100% serious, that this is not just, a, you know, spur of the moment kind of thing. He has to, to make an effort. And it's also, you know, don't tell me that I shouldn't be driving a cab, you know, don't don't judge me for my job kind of thing and yeah um reese finally has time to go you know training it's, and and you know sid yeah they they take turns at like you know one of them holds up the thing and the other one hits you know for for the training and as they're doing that, I, I really, I'm a mark for scenes like this, but it's just so fun that, like, they actually do keep swapping, you know, and they're, they're, yeah, they're both, they're venting. They're, they're, like, they're trying to physically say, and, and it is also this thing of, you know, they take turns just unleashing on the other and, and, yeah, the, the physical punches, even though they're not, like, meant to her, they're not, like, hitting each other in the face or something, that is, yeah, it's charged with the emotion of, of the, the words that are verbalizing the thoughts they have about this, you know, this love triangle. And, like, gradually, like, every, you know, by the end of this, you know, discussion, Everyone in there is just like staring at them. It's just yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and, and we see gradually, you know, Dre and Reese are less happy together while the you know the relationship between 
um, Kelby and Sid is is quite good. And yeah, the New Year's party has some some really fun moments as well. So let's see. We have the um, um, let's see. Yeah, we we you know it's clear that Kelby isn't quite comfortable with Dre complimenting Sid, and you know Kev is like, you know, I'm, I'm hungry here, you know. So, so he's like, so, um, can we eat now? And and one was like, and and I think it's like Kelby who's like, just you know, before we do that, I have one more thing, and you know, he starts something, and Kev's like, we're never gonna eat, are we? <laughs> and yeah. Kelby proposes, and the, yeah, um, Cav very awkwardly flirting with Francine is, is a lot of fun, and it is that thing, again, like, if a guy is sufficiently attracted yeah, even even someone who's normally really really smooth, because he's usually a very confident person in in this movie, you know. But yeah, if it's someone that we're really really into, we might end up just saying like he's standing there saying, "Oh, you know, I wonder why they're called champagne flutes." <laughs> like, dude, come on. And let's see. Um, yeah, and, and the afterwards, like, Sid and, and Francine are, like, talking about it, and, and she's like, I mean, it was kind of cute, you know, he's, he's, he's trying, kind of thing, just, and, and that is also, you know, thankfully a lot of women are, are charmed by the attempt more than, like, just shaking their head at our utter failure to, to flirt well. And let's see. You know, if if you're young and you're not good at it yet, it you know, with enough practice, you you can eventually get there. You know, it's especially if you're confident in other areas. You know, just remember, you're the catch. Just you know, she would be lucky to have you. You know, that doesn't mean that she's not also amazing, but you know, don't don't put yourself down. That's not going to help any. You know, self reflection can be useful, but not like self hatred, self loathing. And let's see the <laughs> yeah. Um, Kelby wants to also get into to rapping, and he's like he's so bad at it. And it's yeah. Uh, right, and uh, around this time, like, uh, at least one point, Dre calls Kelby Sasquatch, and it's like, I mean, yeah, he is, he is taller, and, and that is something that you notice. And, and there's also that part where, you know, like, later in the movie, he's, like, kind of, kind of worried, like, Kelby's not here, is he's, like, a little worried that, he's, he's, like, thinking, you know, there's no way I'm winning a fight between the two of us. And let's see. And then we have the um, um hmm. Oh right, right. Uh yeah, so Sid talks to, to Dre and points out, you know, sometimes Reese flirts. And, you know, he, he claims to be okay with it, but clearly isn't completely. And, yeah, it's this, you know, Sid says, you should worry about your own marriage. And he is not willing to let that go until she explains what she means by that. Which, yeah, that's a... <laughs> and... You know, it's it's one of those fun, because, like, Sid, she doesn't want to get involved. You know, she doesn't want to be responsible for breaking up a couple. But she she didn't, she, you know, she, she noticed. She noticed that Reese flirts with, with the other men, you know, men that are not her husband. And, yeah, if, if Dre comes at her like that, 
she's she's gonna say it and then be like, Ugh, I shouldn't have said that. Just forget about it. And yeah, uh, Sid expresses, you know, she's she's nervous about the the writing of the book, and then we realize, you know, Kelby doesn't read the the stuff she writes, which, you know, that's. That's something that I really do think. If you're if you're with if your partner is creative, support them in it. Don't you know? And especially don't pretend to be and then admit. Oh, I mean, I didn't actually read the thing you wrote. You know, just they put a lot of effort into creating the thing. You know, if you're with them, you really should be supportive of the the thing that they you know. I, I tried, I, I honestly, thinking back on it, I, I don't think I did as good a job as, as I could have, but I was with a, an artist once, and yeah, it's, it's super important. Like, it's fine to, you know, you can offer constructive criticism, but at least engage with it. Don't just not, you know. And that was also when she said, you know, when she mentioned an, an article, and he said, oh, yeah, I, I, I read that, I, I liked it, you know. At first, I thought that she already realized that he must not have read it, and so she said, "You know, what did you think of this article?" And then when he said, "I, you know, that he likes it," she's going to be like, "Cause I didn't write that article," or something like that. But no, again, it's uh, you know, yeah, and and you know, he he then goes on to say, "Oh, but I mean, I'll I'll read everything you've you read, you know, but why did you need her to like?" I mean, she didn't come out and say, you know, you should be reading everything I write, but just, you know, you should you should want that already. You know, you should want to support your partner. I, again, otherwise you might just not be that great of a fit if, if you're not, if you don't care enough to, to, you know, really try to support them. And then we get the, yeah, the payoff to the thing that was set up earlier about, you know, sometimes Reese and Dre accidentally swap phones, and yeah, Dre sees the the text confirming this this date and confronts Reese in this restaurant. I thought that scene was gonna get much cringier than it was. It was somewhat cringy, but no, I really I I felt like they they were fairly restrained considering how it it could have gone and, and it just i don't know it was it was funny you know dre you know and and sid is like i do not want to be here you know like just if if she were a mutant this is when her power would would like manifest because she feels so strongly that she should not be here you know and and yeah dre walks up so you know, so fun to see you here. Who are you? And and you know the the yeah he imitates how the the guy talks and and just yeah and you know he says so you know we're we're married and and you know the guy to his credit and again you know they could easily have had this guy be like so but no instead he's like I did not know that I'm so sorry you know and. You know, yeah, he points out, well, how would you know? Because she took off her ring, you know, so, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and then, you know, we, we see that Dre remembers the very first published article that Sid wrote. You know, so again, and this is this is not very many minutes after the the conversation where we realized that Kelby hasn't even read the most recent, you know, so just, yeah. And and it's also, you know, like he's talking about the the deep insight. So, you know, he's he's kind of praising, you know, it wasn't something that she like thought up. It was an answer she got out of, but that means she's a good interviewer. And she has good instincts about what to put in the the article because you know this is not news to anyone who's ever conducted an interview 
but if you've never, yeah, there's a lot that does not get put in there, you know, I have been on both sides of that, there's a lot that just does not get put, you know, and if, if you've been interviewed and, and you, like, watch it or read it and you're like, but I, I said this other thing, what you said, as much as you might have thought it was interesting, it just maybe wasn't quite, you know, something has to go. It, it maybe wasn't the very best thing that has, has ever, you know, but, but yeah, um, let's see, yeah, and, and I can't help but note the, the, the blue vase that they were talking about, you know, earlier, the, the shop person was like saying, that, you know, great for newlyweds, you know, now she does have that, the, the, you know, it's there in the frame, it's it's making us think, oh, right, you know, they were mistaken for newlyweds, so maybe they should be together. And then there's that bit where, you know, right before they, they end up having sex, Dre and Sid are, like, basically Sid has, like, her back against the, the, you know, I actually, a book bookshelf, I guess it's called, yeah, um, and, you know, Dre is, is very close to her, and it's one of those things where, like, she's not giving verbal consent, but, you know, if you look at her body language, like, she does want, essentially, she feels bad that they both want to, to have sex since they're, they're I, I suppose he's no longer with Reese, but she is still with Kelby, but, you know, if, yeah, if you look at her body language, she does want, like, I, I, I would have loved if there was maybe a more, like, clear, I, yeah, verbal consent would have would have been really great also, but it is not like it's it's not a scene of a man trying to get a woman to to just give in even though she doesn't really want to. It's basically a man you know trying to say, look, we we do both want this clearly. You know, this has been in the air for a very long time. And and yeah, they they have sex and and like you know afterwards he's like I'm I'm so sorry I I usually last much longer I don't know what's I you know and it's it's the thing you know if you're really really nervous it might go fast it's you know and and he just can't stop thinking about it so you know she's like this is terrible and he's like it wasn't that bad <laughs> you know she's obviously talking about I you know I I cheated on Kelby I didn't mean to do that. And, and all he can think about is his performance, because that, is, yeah, you know, that's another thing we got to get better at. As, you know, young, as young men, we got to get better at not being so hyper fixated on just our sexual performance, because there's so many other things that women care deeply about in, in relationships with us. And let's see. Is this video also getting very heteronormative? At, at the end of the day, I just I only have experience with straight relationships. Everything else is is, you know, I'm I'm, you know, I'm I'm listening to others and and repeating their words. But yeah, I've made other videos where I talk more, where I try to more make it like also include LGBTQ plus people. I realize I'm not doing the best job at this in this one, at that in this one, and the yeah, we get another thing of of you know the number, you know he yeah she says you know those are five amazing minutes and he's like ten, six, not okay nine you know or eight I think they land on eight. It's, it, yeah yeah, yes. Moving on, and and it's yeah. There's that conversation about you know. I think it's it's yeah. It's Cav who says Dre to to Dre. You punked out with Sydney, and then the Dalmatians on the radio, and it's like oh my god. And 
let's see. Yeah, and and you know, Dre is told, you know, but but the CD, just put it in. He already did, and you know, he's he's like trying to figure out the machine, and she's offering no help. She's like on the phone, and it's like, hey, do I put it in here? No, that's not right. Does it? Nope, does not. Um, oh, there, it's it's opening. Uh, let's see, the thing goes in, and then it closes. There we go. Now. And yeah, um, she told yeah they talk about you know Sid points out it's a conflict of interest and yeah very you know she's she is the more responsible of the two that it's absolutely true that is a huge problem you really can't have that kind of yeah. You know, they could both end up in a lot of trouble, and it might really hurt Cav's, you know, further chances. And then we have the, um, um, yeah, um, Reese calls Dre, and yeah, they talk, you know, we haven't really tried, you know, maybe we shouldn't get a divorce kind of thing. And I like the joke about, you know, you know I gotta take 50% of what you got. Well, here it is, 58.25. And, yeah, Sydney gives the ring back and then sees, you know, Dre and, and Reese seemingly back together, just... And, and that's again, you know, that is technically the misunderstanding, the miscommunication thing, but it doesn't last very long. I really appreciate it. There's some of these movies, it just, it takes up way too much of the movie. It's like we, like the, it's like the filmmakers think we have to see that they're miserable apart before they can get back together. There's other ways to accomplish that. You don't have to grind the story to a halt with this thing. And, and that's where I think this movie does a much better job because over the course of it, we're seeing, you know, oh, they really know each other. They're kind of sad when they're apart and that kind of thing. And let's see. Um, then we have the. Um, oh, right, right, yeah. Uh, Dre talks to the, the radio person and is more insistent, and this time actually gets it across. And the the yeah, Sid, you know, doing the radio interview. And we have this thing of, you know, I dedicate this to my true love. And it's like, <gasps> hip-hop. Uh-huh, yeah, mm, sure. And, yeah, you know, Dre hears that on the radio. And, and we have the thing, you know, go, Humphrey. <laughs> Which was also, a, a, you know, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, not a fan of the, the gay panic there. But, yeah, like... Come on, Bogey. You, you know it, it. That was a very unsatisfying kind of you know. But that was, yeah, that was what they were doing with with those. You know, they a lot of those movies. You know, it was basically a film noir. A lot of film noir has this kind of downer, downbeat ending that just yeah. And yeah, Dre calls in. And asks her the question, you know, when did you first fall in love with hip hop? And you know, she gives the the answer that we, you know, we the the viewer heard that answer at the very start of the movie. You know, right after the, I think it was after, was it before? Anyway, right around the time we also got this montage of actual hip hop artists talking about when they first fell in love. And and as far as I could tell, that was all real. That wasn't like they they just. You know, they set up the camera, they asked them that question. They might have, like, given them some time. They might have told them, we're going to ask you this question, think of a good answer. But as far as I could tell, that was th those hip-hop artists being 100% sincere. And that's obviously, you know, that's what, what that's a big part of hip-hop is sincerity, is, you know, especially classic hip-hop. You you want them to, to be honest. It's not supposed to be a product. It's them expressing themselves, and yeah, you know, then you have the thing about, you know, 
I'm going to ask the question again because I don't think you understood. When did you first know, you know, and it's obviously he's saying, you know, you and I love each other. Yeah, and it's actually, come to think of it, he's kind of doing the op At the start of the movie, he was the one on speakerphone trying to get her to, to give the, the answer that he wanted. And now she's the one on the radio. Or, I mean, technically, they're both on the radio, but she's, you know... Everyone knows her name because they just said we're, you know, interviewing Sydney Shaw here. So, you know, really putting her on the spot. And, yeah. And, and I love Francine being encouraging from the, you know, and, and yeah, this time Dre does manage to get, you know, yeah, or, yes, the roles have reversed. Sydney's the one apologizing where at the start of the movie and with the speaker call... Dre was apologizing, and and I like you know Sid goes through you know the the yeah the various things she she said and did that were and and you know you have the the thing about um what's the word the the you know fr yeah Francine is like you know stupid add stupid and yeah, stupid. And let's see. Yeah, and and you know, finally the the we have the thing. You know, I loved you since the the day we met. And and Dre also confesses his love on the radio. And <laughs> and then we see why he he ripped a piece of paper from the. You know, I th I think it's like for for signing in. You know, the the. Um, Either he or Cav like rip that, and and then they walk up to the the radius, you know, and he wrote, "Will you go out with me? Yes, no, maybe." <laughs> you know, appealing to to this, yeah. That was, earlier, you know, he said that's what he would do, and she said, "Oh, you're so romantic," and then, you know, he's being romantic, but he's still doing that, you know, yeah, silly kind of high school thing. Be, you know, because they've known each other for so long. And, I, yeah, um, then Cav is, like, trying to, to you know, he's, he's like, I found out some more stuff about champagne flutes. And Francine is like, mm -hmm, go on. Uh, last time I believe you told me that my food was delicious and nutritious. Uh, can we, you know, and, and, you know, he's, he's just standing there. He's, he's like really struggling. And finally Francine's like, you want to go out? <laughs> because, it kinda, yeah, he's, he's too nervous to, to just get, and yeah. And, and again, the movie's not saying there's something wrong with, you know, yeah. If one of the two people are too nervous to, to just, come right out and say it, but they both want to, yeah, it's fine if it's the woman asking the man out. It's it's, it, it's such an old-fashioned thing to say, oh, you know, the only way for this kind of thing to work is if it's the man asking the woman out. Let's see. And... Yeah. The, the movie ends with us seeing Dre and and Sid as, as kids, you know, again, underlining the, the connection they've felt all this time. And let's see, I think that is about, um, yeah. Um, let's see, I think that was, right, um, yes, some people took issue with the, the fact that several of the characters that we're supposed to empathize with end up, you know, cheating, and I, I completely understand that. And I agree that that's definitely, you know, that's not something that we should, like, that's not something that should be encouraged. I do think that what the movie is trying to do 
is not saying that it's right. It's not really like trying to normalize it as something. It's more saying sometimes this happens and, you know, yeah, like I've, I've always said, you know, if you feel very attracted to a person that is not your partner, if you're in a monogamous relationship, you know, it's maybe a good, maybe start by talking to your partner and trying to, you know, get to the bottom of, because a lot of these relationships can be salvaged, you just need a conversation, you know, it's, it's usually, again, I'm, to be clear, there's nothing wrong with the the with with polygamy and polyamory. If that's where you're at, then that's 100. percent You know, you yeah. I I don't know enough to to say. I just know that those exist. Um, you know, if that's then obviously it's it's different. But if you're in a monogamous relationship, you can talk to the person that you're in a relationship with, you know, maybe you can, maybe you do want a, um, an open relationship, or maybe there's something that your partner just hasn't quite been providing. You know, if you, if you feel that you want a monogamous relationship, but you find yourself very attracted to someone you're not in a relationship with, you know, a lot of the time it's because your partner isn't fulfilling all of your needs, and a lot of people they didn't mean to not be fulfilling your needs. They just didn't realize that they, you know, maybe they were stressed about something. Maybe it's, you've been together for a long time and, and you know, it's, it's difficult to maintain the kind of passion you had early on, but now it's slid too far, you know, stuff like that. Talk to your partner. If you just cannot, you know, it's some, some people will end up breaking up, but at least you didn't cheat, you know. And I I do think that it's noteworthy that, like, pretty much every character in this movie thinks that cheating is, is wrong. Like, the only person who intentionally cheats, you know, yeah, Reese attempts to and does end up feeling bad about it, you know, possibly not right away at first, she's just like, ah, crap, I got caught. But later she is trying to make things work with Dre, and, you know, ultimately Sid gives in and and gets with Dre while she's still with, with Kelby, but that, she regrets that, you know, and, and she feels bad even before doing it, not just, like, afterwards, like, what did we just do kind of thing. And, you know, like Francine wants for, for Dre and Sid to end up together, but she's not looking for them to, to cheat. She tries to stop the wedding because she doesn't want for her friend to, to you know, help a married man cheat. You know, so it is basically, I, th I think it can be useful to put these things in movies and, and just explore the fact that it can be difficult, you know, sometimes, like, some people end up cheating who really didn't mean to, and, yeah, you know, love is complicated. Um, I would have liked if the, the, if you slightly rewrote it to where, you know, ultimately there was you know, yeah, ultimately Sid never did cheat and, and Dre wasn't with Sid while she was with Kelby. But, you know, outside of that, I, I do think that it's important to not, like, dehumanize people who do end up cheating. Because, certainly, some are just, you know, some are doing it to, to hurt and upset but not everyone is. Like, you know, if, if we're, like, crafting a fictional character to make them really unappealing to a, you know, a regular viewer, let's try to focus on stuff that, like, you know, good people just never do. Like, okay, I'm going to try to think of something that's not going to end this video on a really sour note. Uh, let's see. I think... 
yeah, let's see. Was there something in this movie that really... Yeah, like uh, Simon, you know, Dre's boss, saying, if you want to work here, you have to compromise your values. That's, you know, that's a really awful thing to do. You know, he could have said, okay, you know what, let's do a, let's, how about one for, one for them, one for you kind of thing. You know, maybe you could try to make, you know, maybe next time you bring in someone that you have a lot of faith in, you know, and, and the ones that make a lot of money will help cover for maybe some losses for the ones that you're more passionate about kind of thing, you know the and and I do also appreciate like Simon doesn't really get a redemption like he is just a bad you know I I you know as a communist I am quite fond of when like the person who comes out looking the worst is the hyper capitalist so yeah you know like they could easily have had like a scene of oh but you know he has bills to pay or you know yeah but you could still you know the counter argument to that yeah bills to pay everybody's got bills to pay that doesn't mean that everybody, you know, uh, compromises their values. That is it for this video. Uh, hit me up in the comments. Let me know when did you first fall in love with hip-hop. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one to more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, one talking about my spoiler for thoughts on the most recent episode I've currently gotten around to watching of the uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead TV show. I do one of a an animated Star Wars show that, you know, I hadn't watched before, you know, that day. Currently, I'm doing Young Jedi Adventures. You know, I'm almost caught up, but I th I feel like I read somewhere that there's going to be more episodes soon. And, you know, once I'm all the way caught up to Young Jedi Adventures, I'll be doing Droids and Ewoks, the old the 1985 animated shows. I also do, I, I try to make it daily, but it doesn't end up being every single day. Episode talking about video talking about an episode of an animated Marvel show, you know, usually either MCU or X Men. Uh, later today, I'll be doing the first episode of The Gifted, although it's possible that both videos will be uploaded around the, the same time. We'll see. And let's see. Uh, yeah, recently the Ruined Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if more videos like this, you're not. You can check out my back catalogs, which catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.